Uh, now, this is another discussion about diabetes, which is a very common uh, type of disease in our desert. So diabetes is a metabolic disease, but remember very well that uh, type 1 diabetes is autoimmune areas, uh, type 2 diabetes is a metabolic uh, disease. So uh, the diabetes uh, uh, metabolic can, is characterized by hyperglycemia, chronic hyperglycemia, and sometimes the patient may manifest with them either hypoglycemia or even normal sugar. So you have to follow your patient very carefully and uh, depending on the point of where you meet your patient. So uh, this is because there is a, a problem in uh, metabolism of carbohydrates, the metabolism of fats, and also metabolism of proteins and uh, due to insulin defect in the body. And the defect may be either, number one, there is insufficient or abnormal secretions of the insulin or number two, uh, a problem in actions of the insulin and both or both can be the same. Sometimes even the transportation of insulin is an issue because at the point of um, productions to the point of actions also is an issue. So sometimes even the transportation of insulin is very important, especially when it involves the, 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 the receptors. So uh, in a normal person, there is glucose and metabolism, uh, uh, glucose and fat metabolism, follows a specific way of pattern is depending on uh, the level of glucose, the fat metabolism in the body. Remember that in a normal person, the body always prefer to get energy from glucose, fat, then to the, uh, then to the uh, amino acids, except the cardiac muscles, which have another um, uh, which have another um, a set of uh, actions they prefer to get uh, from uh, amino acids uh, um, as a priority. So in this case, there you see that the glucose, which is produced the pancreas, uh, which uh, the, the glucose uh, uh, provokes the glucose from the GIT uh, uh, goes to the body and then it provokes the pancreatic beta cells to produce insulin, and this glucose. Uh, it is uptaken by the muscles in the body, and in the muscles, glucose can either be converted into glycogen where it is stored, or if there is any need be, the glucagon, uh, the glucagon uh, can also change it, uh, can be converted again if there is any need. Again, it can also be oxidized to create pyrates uh, in the case of uh, glucogenesis, if there is any need of um, uh, uh, glucose stored in the body, uh, in the body. So uh, that is uh, how it behaves. Then again, glucose uh, can also uh, enter the adipose tissues and it is oxidized. It is oxidized and it is oxidized in the fatty uh, tissues. It is oxidized uh, and then uh, there, there is formation of uh, 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 oxidation producing energy. In the body again, the another source of energy except for the GAT is from glucogenesis in the liver of the stored glucose, which comes either from the pulage from the glucose and glucagon converted, then it is converted in the liver of glucogenesis. Again, that's another part of it. Then another, uh, also amino acids can also in the liver can uh, behave like that one. So, in the liver, there is glucogenesis. And also uh, glycogen, glucose, um, uh, uh, balance of happens there. Again, in the liver, glucose can be oxidized. Uh, can be oxidized. Uh, again, in the liver, free fatty acids uh, can be oxidized and uh, and and also uh, ketogenesis. So, yeah, this is now where the, the, the ketones are converted into to produce energy. And this is where now the DKA comes in. We can see that again uh, in the adipose tissues that the free fatty acids can go to the liver producing the ketones and gracel again can cause that. So that is the part of uh, DKA. I am going to only talk about the free fatty acids and gracel. You remember that the gracel is attached to four molecules of free fatty acids, and if the body prefers to follow the pathways of free fatty acids, then DKA happens. If it follows the, the pathway of gracel, the patient manifests in the hyper or smaller. Or if the patient goes the pathway of uh, protein, the patient gets hyper or smaller and diabetes as a complication. So sometimes there are some consequences which can happen 
Some consequences can happen if the patient has a resistance or insulin deficiency in the body. Um, uh, uh, previously, we have seen that that is a normal person. Now we have to see another patient who has abnormal uh, deficits of uh, insulin in the body or uh, in, in the body. So in this case now, the patient will manifest with the various um, uh, issues in the body. And later, first of all, see the part is if there is insufficient glucose in the body. If there is insufficient uh, insulin in the body, there will be no uptake of glucose by the by the muscles. There will be no uptake of the glucose by the hand tissues. Uh, and uh, that will result to hypangracemia, excessive glucose in the body. In this case, again, there will be glyst uh, proteolysis resulting to glyst uh, um, amino acids uh, uh, in the body. Then there will be glyst uh, lactic purity in the body resulting to glucogenesis. Uh, in the body. So uh, in this case, ketones will be high, free fatty acids will be high, glycerol will be high, uh, and also ketones and free fatty acids will be high. So oxidation will be taking place in this type of patient. So generally, if there is excessive, if there is no production of insulin, everything goes high, except there is reduced glucose entry into that. There is reduced oxidation, induced uptake by the muscles and reduced glycerin uh, synthesis. So uh, the clinical features of diabetes due to lack of insulin is that in this type of patient is that there is a decreased anabolic uh, in the body resulting to uh, hyperglycemia and the hyperglycemia results the patient will manifest with fatigue. The patient will pass a lot of urine in the, in the sugars. This one will result to arthritis and bananitis. So the, the, because the normal florals in the GIT will get a lot of, on the UTI system, will get a lot, uh, uh, will get a lot of sugars, then will get and uh, uh, multiply because of the uh, feeding on, on this. The other one is uh, the aerobic osmotic diuresis because of, um, you know, that the glucose is, uh, causes, is a diuretic causes of urine. So the patient will manage to for urea or the dipsia. In this case, you know that the aerobic will be solid depression because the patient will be having a, um, taking out a lot of water then result to low salt in the body depression result to tachycardia which can result to hypertension resulting to lactic acidosis and these steps can cause also death so in this case the patient manifests with hyper uh, hyperosmora hyperglycemia uh, syndrome if there is a problem in decrease in anaerobic uh, pathways so uh, you see that uh, it can also have another pathway where that there is increased catabolism, either because of increased secretion of glucagon control and uh, cortical and growth hormone and catacolamines. These are hormones which counter the insulin, then resulting to increased catabolism, which uh, can result to gluconolysis, gluconeogenesis, and lipolysis. And this one results to hyperketonuria, uh, hyper resulting to acidis, resulting to diabetic ketoacidosis. So in this case now, the patient with the excessive gluconeogenesis will manifest the mass wasting, and the loss of weight. And a patient with hyperketonuria will manifest with the acetone. Uh, and this one now, the patient has started developing a, a lactic acidosis. And the patient will have acidosis with, uh, manifesting with hyperventrition and also manifest with uh, peripheral uh, muscle dilatation. This one results to hypotension and results to hypothermia. And the patient can die because of uh, lactic acidosis. So, in summary, what are the functions of insulin? Uh, insulin uh, uh, in the body stops glucogenesis, it stops glucogenesis, it stops <coughs> lipolysis, and it stops ketogenesis, and also it stops proteolysis. Insulin in the body promotes glucose uptake in the muscles and adipose tissues, uh, promote glycolysis, promote glycogenesis synthesis, and promote protein synthesis and also promote uptake of ions, especially uh, sodium and the and the uh, phosphorus in the body. So um, insulin uh, level increases when you take food by mouth. When you compare, when you give somebody glucose intravenously and when you give this person glucose uh, per hour, the one who is given per hour is the equal amount of glucose 
they produce a lot of insulin because of something called the creatine effect. The creatine effect is is the relationship is is, is this is to explain that uh, um, the GIT system when it is uh, uh, it is synthesized with the glucose it, it tends to uh, make the body produce more insulin uh, in the body in comparison with the uh, taking uh, 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 intravenous because the are receptors in the body in the GST system which uh, send a message to the pancreas so that they can produce uh, uh, insulin. So that is the reason why there the, the, the are drugs which are manufactured in the basis of creatine effect. And again, this is the reason why uh, when you take food, the insulin levels goes high. So uh, there is at least 12 classifications of, uh, there is 12 classifications of insulin of uh, diabetes. There is 12 classifications of uh, diabetes, not only the one which are commonly known, which are very commonly known. So there is 12 types of diabetes uh, study. So there is type one diabetes, there is type two diabetes, and also there is gestational diabetes. There's a Monday diabetes, is a Monday there is neonatal diabetes. There is what is called Wolfram syndrome. There's what is called Astron syndrome and also Aranda. There's a diabetes called type 3C and also there is type 4 diabetes. There's steroid induced diabetes and there's cystic fibrosis and diabetes. All those ones are types of diabetes in the body, which um, are, uh, are classified uh, by rather in an intensive uh, manner. So uh, diabetic ketoacidosis which is an acute complication of uh, diabetes is um, uh, is uh, is a medical is a medical emergency in acute uh, uh, setup. Which two type of patient always appear in the in the emergency department. With and it's very common in type one and diabetes. Uh, it is one of the common cause of mortality in adolescents and children because of cerebral edema. And in adult in the dead is associated with hypokalemia, acute respiratory distress, and comorbidity uh, uh, like hypertension and A, all these ones. And the, this condition is associated with the cautious breathing, and uh, uh, they have a sweet breathing, a sweet breathing because of um, of uh, uh, lactic acidosis. So uh, the pathophysiology in this one is that there is no more person, the insulin is no more there. There is the counter regulator almost like glucagon, epinephrine, and corticone and growth hormone and also times sometimes thyroid grand hormone uh, like uh, thyroxine and um, t 3 t 4 also act in these counter regulatory types of hormone because they are catabolic type of, uh, of insulin so in andika here there is a deficit in the uh, insulin production which uh, there is excessive production of counter regulatory hormones uh, like because they promote catabolism and these ones the that is forced metabolism which results to anaerobic production of metabolism, which results to lactic acid and lactic acid and causes a DKA. So in this case, this is the flow of a patient who has a DKA. So the patient is having a insufficient, a, a, a insufficient insulin in the body. So this patient will have um, reduced glucose uptake. And if this patient has reduced glucose uptake, there will be excess glucose in the body, which is called hyperglycemia. And in this type of patient, they will have the, if there is excessive glucose in the body, this one will result to excessive glucose excreted through the kidneys, resulting to what is called osmotic diuresis. And osmotic diuresis, you know that the water comes out of the body together with sodium. So the patient will have low uh, sodium, that is uh, uh, low sodium and hyperkalemia. In this type of patient, you will have hyperkalemia and the low sodium in the body because the sodium will be excreted together in the water. So the patient will have electrolyte imbalance, specifically low sodium, that is hypernatremia, and they also will have dehydration because of excessive of, uh, uh, excretion of uh, 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 water, which is as a way of osmotic diuresis. The body is excreting a lot of water to clear the sugars in the body. Again, in this case of uh, iron, uh, in insulin deficiency in the body, uh, there is excessive uh, pluralysis, and excessive pluralysis can be manifest with 
amino acids and then glycogenesis and glycogenesis and all these ones happens in the liver and all these ones happens in the liver glycogenesis and glycogenesis and these ones result to excessive catabolic hormones and these ones those are they promote uh, catabolism this one results to hyperglycemia. This one uh, results to hyperglycemia, and then the flow of osmotic stresses, the addition and electrolyte balance, specifically, so sodium metabolism comes in. So the other pathway, it can also cause the part, it can also follow the pathway of uh, lipolysis. And the lipolysis, it can either follow the pathway of free fatty acids or the glycemic. If the if the, 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 the body decides to do uh, break down the lipids. To produce energy in a place where there is insufficient uh, insulin, and then it follows the the the, the pathway of glycemic. The patient is safer because the patient is going to develop hyperglycemia, which is hyperosmolar hyperglycemia syndrome. But if the body follows the pathway of free fatty acids, and you remember that one glycemic is attached to four free fatty acids molecules, so. The body has excess, has a lot of free fatty acids. And if there's free fatty acids break down in the body by the liver causing because of hepatic ketogenesis, then uh, this type of uh, patient will manifest what we call metabolic acidosis, which is lead to forced ions into the cells and displaces, uh, uh, displaces potassium, because this is something to ketosis, is something to uh, ketosis. So, Patients who have a liver failure may not develop DKA like a patient who have hyperglycemia, who has hyperglycemia. And again, patients who have, who have um, this uh, type of problem, they develop uh, 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 DKA and then uh, uh, it can also cause uh, death. So in DKA, the kind of features of biochemical features of DKA is that the patient has hyperketonemia. We and also that is more than the three minimums per liter. And also ketones in the urine more than two in a standard urine stick. And also they have hyperglycemia. Sometimes the, the normal test in our setup it is also uh, it is so um, uh, and lack of them. Also, this the patient when you do the the meta the, 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 the venous gases, you see that the patient has metabolic acidosis if they have bicarbonate more than 15 minimums per liter and more than the venous of more than piece of more than 7.3. So in, in this case, the clinical manifestations of this. Diabetes patient who has insufficient insulin in the body is that there is an affected glucose uptake in the body, resulting to excessive glucose secreting in the body. This type of patient will have osmotic diuresis because that you know that glucose is an osmotic diuretic. Then in this type of patient, they will manifest with polyuria, polydipsia. And in this patient, they will manifest with dehydration, the tongue and the candy, and also they will have hypertension and the patient will manifest with uh, abdominal pain. And also the patient will manifest with electrolyte imbalance because of low sodium uh, in the body. Uh, if the patient, the body stands weak and down a lot of uh, pro uh, proteins, a lot of amino acids will be produced. And when a lot of amino acids is produced in the body, that means glucogenesis and glucogenesis happens in the body. And this one results to hyperglycemia Again, the pathway of somatic diuresis can fall up. So in these two pathways, the patient is safe from acidosis. Is safe from acidosis, but is at risk of hyperglycemia. If the body is utilizing the pathway of normal glucose or proteins, but if the body takes the pathway of breaking down the lipids to produce energy, then it can follow two pathways: the pathway of glycemia and the pathway of free fatty acids. If it follows the pathway of glycerin, and they have seen that the glycerin is, is attached to four molecules of free fatty acids, this patient is at a good uh, advantage uh, of not developing uh, lactic acidosis, but you will develop hyperglycemia. 
because the grass cell will fall the value of glucogenesis and glucogenesis. But if the free fatty acids, they will cause ketogenesis in the liver and then the patient will have acidosis. And this patient will manifest in your clinic with fruit bread because of artisan acetones. And the patient will have acidotic breathing, which is called Kushimo breathing. And sometimes the patient will start developing mental status because of uh, intracranial and uh, uh, increased depression because um, uh, of uh, a lot of fluid in the brain. So basically, the patient who are diabetic uh, ketoacidosis, the, 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 the disease, uh, the, the problem happens very fast. That is within four to 10 hours. And the, there is an history of lack of insulin. The patient may have a problem like um, uh, a precipitating factor, like a febrile illness, like malaria or any other condition. Or the patient may have a GIT upset or uh, uh, can be the one which provoke that. So it is very important for you to take very important history of the patient. So the patient will have uh, we will manifest with uh, features of Cosmo breathing, dust, dehydration, tachycardia, and hypotension and acidosis. And at this point, that the sugars are very high, sometimes in our setup, it is an echo. The patient will have hypo, hypercalemia, uh, hypercalemia, and polyuria. Uh, then um, the patient will need urgent hydration, insulin rate increments. Um, because it can cause a lot of effects in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the heart muscles. So in this type of patient, you have to do investigation by doing venous blood for a rare electrolyte, glucose, and bicarbonate. You do atrial blood gases to assess the reality of the acidosis. You check urine for ketones, ECG, and also you screen for any factors which cause this type of problem like an infection. So the treatment is this one. You have to use short acting insulin because we need the result very fast. You have to start hydrating this patient with sodium chloride and also you do potassium replacement because the patient has, um, uh, has uh, low uh, sodium in the body. So then you give a sodium bicarbonate in this patient to have severe uh, uh, acidotic patient and also you, if there's any infections in the body, you can give antibiotics or you can give at protozoa if it is a type of malaria infection that we should. So the most common complications of uh, DKE is cerebral edema and uh, uh, acute respiratory distress and the thromboembolism and the disseminated intravascular coagulation. Sometimes patients can have what we call acute circulatory uh, uh, failure. So the other complication of The other complication of um, acute complications of diabetes is uh, what you call hyperosmora hypercalcemia syndrome, and it occurs due to relative insulin deficiency or inadequate fluid intake. And in this case now the patient is uh, um, having insufficient insulin result to severe hypercalcemia, and in severe hypercalcemia, this one results to severe osmotic dehydration is because of glycosuria, osmotic diseases, and then patient can face polyuria. Or on the other way, the patient can follow the value of polysis without ketones. This patient will manifest in weight loss or sometimes in polydipsia. So it is characterized by hypoglycemia and also hyposmolarity, serum of more than a V20 minimum osmolarity package body. This is being treated and there is absence of hyper. Ketonemia or acidosis. So, clinical manifestation of this type of disease is they have a polyuria, weight loss, and indigenous oral intake, profound dehydration, and hypotension, tachycardia, and alternate mental status, and mental condition, and neurological, or sometimes in coma. So, the management of this patient, you have to give normal saline, you replace fluid electrolyte, and also uh, you normalize blood glucose by doing monitoring blood glucose that minute by giving. Uh, 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 insulin at uh, 0 0.1 milligrams per kg body weight in the dose uh, until you achieve uh, the desired result of 4.9 and um, 4.9 to uh, 6.9 and glucose. So uh, the other one is uh, hypoglycemia. In hypoglycemia, patient um, this is because either the patient is using a lot of insulin or the body is having hyper insulin like in cancers and uh, there is what we call wimpo trial. This patient manifests with the persistent 
high hypoglycemia, the outgroup was low plasma glucose concentrations and also the uh, by uh, uh, if you give to those this particular patient respond uh, very fast. So the most common cause of hypoglycemia is uh, mm, uh, um, inadequate meal or drained meal or missed meal. And I explained around use of exercise, alcohol, error in the anti diabetic drug or insulin, those send you administration, poor design insulin regime, lipotropy, factitious delivery, or sometimes even breastfeeding malas. So, in a normal person, when blood glucose level falls, then the body works in three ways. It has endogenous insulin list in suppressed, which results in reduction of whole blood glucose uptake and increased hepatic glucose production. This is now glucogenesis, and this one restores the glucose to normal supply because of the brain. Then again, if you can also reduce the glucagon, it's needed. That's the count of insulin. The autonomic system is activating to produce catecholamines, stress hormones, uh, and all these ones are in the body. So, uh, so type 1 diabetes cannot regulate insulin once injection is subcutaneous. And this one is hypoglycemia. So, the symptoms of uh, hypoglycemia is that can be autonomic, neurogenic, or non specific. And this patient, uh, the problem is uh, rapid, that is one to three hours. In the history, you will see that the patient has excess insulin, excess exercise, insufficient, all not well managed uh, diet. The patient will come in your clinic with very anxious, searching, angry, and confused, brown or double vision, shaky, irritable, and cold and cramped skin. This patient will need brown sugar to increase the pain. So in the management in this type of patient is that you give all fast uh, acting carbohydrates, 15 to 10 grams is taken uh, uh, and glucose drink tablets of, or, or take both of them. Then you can maintain this one with a complex carbohydrate. So in a severe case or an unconscious patient, you give uh, IV intravenous 75 milligrams or 20% uh, dextrose, 0.2 grams per kg body weight in children, or you can give IM glucose. In patient, but I don't recommend this one unless you use glucose. If patient is conscious or able to swallow, you give oral fine glucose or 25 milligrams. So there is something called down phenomena and smoke effect. And uh, this is the basis of the reason why uh, in monitoring brown sugar, it is very important to monitor using a, a fasting brown sugar rather than a um, um, Random blood sugar because random blood sugar is affected by uh, 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 the other condition is so that affecting uh, effect. So in don phenomena, it occurs when the endogenous insulin secretion decreases and the smoke effect is seen in cases of excessive amount of exogenous uh, uh, insulin. So in this case, smoke effect too much insulin, hypoglycemia, glucagon is reduced. Recent policies are based in the body because of glucogenesis, glycogenesis, and it results in both hypoglycemia and the ketones. So, in down phenomena, the body uh, responds by releasing uh, early morning uh, uh, hormones, counter regulatory hormones, and least this one, catabolism takes place and glucose um, yeah, levels increases. In diabetes, there is a decrease in insulin levels and so high glucose levels in the morning. So. That means the insulin. in those syndrome, in those phenomena, the don't the insulin is down. So uh, the, the 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 smoke and the don't phenomena is that the smoke effect, the insulin will peak in the middle of the night. It is important to test the sugar plus sugar early in the morning. You may not need to adjust the insulin dose. And again, in the don't phenomena, brown sugar releases within the sun. As the day grows, this is how the sugar uh, grows. So now uh, the relationship between uh, DKA and the hyperosmora uh, is that DKA, it is very common in children, whereas hyperosmora syndrome is uh, elderly people. DKA is very common in type one, hyperosmora in type two. Glucose is more to 15. 
600 na ecosmora ketones are very common in DKE, very little in ecosmora pH is low DKE is high in ecosmora carbon and carbons are low I in ecosmora osmolarity is variable in DKE hyperosmolarity is high and sensitivity to insulin is very high. The patient who have hyperosmolarity, they are sensitive to a small amount of uh, uh, insulin. So then there is the relationship between hypoglycemia and DKE because those type of patients can come to you, both of them having uh, 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 been found somewhere uh, in coma. So uh, in DKE, there is a history of defenses or increased counter regulatory hormones or insulin dependency, then uh, it is gradual. Symptoms are signs of hypoglycemia, dehydration, and systemic acidosis. Random plasma is hypoglycemia, ketonemia is very common, and ketonemia is uh, common. When you give glucose, there is no effect. In hypoglycemia, patients manifest with uh, overdose of hyperinsulinemia. Who are feeding? Acute onset. Systemic brain glucopenia and systemic sympathetic hyperactivity, hypoglycemia, and no ketonemia, no uh, ketonemia. And uh, when you give a patient glucose, it responds uh, very fast. So uh, that is all about diabetes. So you have to remember that the three complications of diabetes are uh, hypo, uh, uh, hypoglycemia, DKE, and hyperosmora are uh, the one which uh, are the most common. You remember about the don phenomena and the smoggy phenomena, you will remember the actin effect and the pathways of those ones. Thank you very much for listening to this lecture. It's going to assist you to be able uh, to